the words of Dr. Martin, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I've almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride towards freedom is not the white citizens counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goals that you seek, but I cannot agree with you in the method of direct action, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom who lives by a mythical concept of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. Hello friends. Since we last gathered together on Sunday, much has occurred. We've had the MLK Memorial Day this past Monday, we've had an inauguration, a changing of, of occupants in the White House and in Congress. We've had both hope in our COVID pandemic and despair. And we've had continued coverage of the white supremacists that took over the Capitol the previous week. It is so easy to want to celebrate the victories and say we have done our work. And making a joyful noise has always been part of the practice of our faith. So yes, shout, flap, exalt, sing, dance. Those too are acts of resistance. Do those, enjoy them, enjoy one another. But it is also important to recognize the cost of those victories. The thousands, both counted and uncounted, who did not make it to today, who will never be with us to celebrate. And so we should celebrate, but we need to be mindful that it will take even more work for us to move forward that there is no more convenient season. There is just now. When Michael, Asia, and I were in discernment about coming to the CLF, about joining as the new lead ministry team, we talked about the different areas and aspects of the church of the larger fellowship. We talked about all the great things that the Church of the Larger Fellowship does, from this kind of Sunday service to um, our, our coffee hours, both live and on Facebook. We, we just talked about everything, and we dreamed about what it could be, what it is, and we talked about the areas in which we had a special calling to ministry. And I talked about the Worthy Now prison ministry and my calling in particular to that ministry. I come from a community that knows very firsthand what the prison industrial complex means. We know what it means to not know where somebody is because they're in transit. We know what it means to not see a relative just because they uh, haven't gotten a, a notice that they needed. We know what it means to have people denied medical care because their commissary account is overdrawn. We know what it means to have people caged and locked away. So I felt this special calling to the Worthy Now prison ministry, and I loved that it was called Worthy Now. I love so much that we center our CLF prison ministry around the idea that everyone is worthy now, not later, not in two years, not in five years, but now we are all worthy of love. It doesn't mean that each of us has to love every single person. 
We may not be at that place where we can love that individual, but we know that that individual is worthy of love. They're worthy of the Spirit's love. They're worthy of God's love. They're worthy of the universe's love. When we came to the Worthy Now Prison Ministry, when I became the, the director of the Worthy Now Prison Ministry, one of the things that I wanted to change was small. I wanted to change how we talk about our Worthy Now um, folks. Prior to when I got here, we talked about our incarcerated, our incarcerated CLF members. And while it's important to, to make a distinction between our incarcerated CLF members and our free world CLF members, it was interesting to me that we didn't talk about ourselves as Unitarian Universalists, first and foremost. Yes, we are members of this beautiful church of the larger fellowship, but first and foremost, we are Unitarian Universalists. So I asked that we change the way we talk about ourselves and we start talking about ourselves as incarcerated Unitarian Universalists because I think it's so important for us to understand that though by the grace of God, that person who is incarcerated would be in the pews with us in our bricks and mortar congregations. They would be with us here on Zoom. They would be with us on Facebook. They would be with us in all the different ways that we experience Unitarian Universalism, except they are caged by the state. So here at the CLF, we're gonna talk about and we're gonna have conversations over this next year about what it means to be in membership, and what it means to be in stewardship of Unitarian Universalism. I look forward to those conversations because we are all Unitarian Universalists and we all have a special place in stewarding Unitarian Universalism. In pastoral care, in religious education, in governance, we are breaking open what it means to be an incarcerated Unitarian Universalist. You've heard from Jen about how we ex are expanding our religious education to our incarcerated UUs. You heard from Althea about how we extend pastoral care to our UUs, our incarcerated UUs. And most recently, if you had a chance to check out the latest issue of Quest here in January, you'll notice that we've invited our incarcerated Unitarian Universalists into governance. We've made it possible for them to vote in governance issues regarding the CLF by mail. And that's just a few of the ways that we are trying to open and broaden what it means to be in community with each other. In the future, in Worthy Now Prison Ministry, we are going to be engaging our incarcerated Unitarian Universalists and our free world UUs in what it means to examine the eighth principle. We, the member congregations of the Unitarian Universalist Association, covenant to affirm and promote journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. That is the eighth principle. And we will be talking about it both in ways that talk about Unitarian Universalism, but also our accountability to each other in our CLF community. We'll also be engaging our incarcerated UUs and our free world UUs with our ideas about the widening the circle report from uh, the Commission on Institutional Change. As our community begins to explore this accountability with the recommendations of, from widening the circle and the eighth principles, I'm gonna ask your, to ask yourselves, when is our more convenient season. When have we put off for tomorrow that which must be done today?
What I will also encourage you to do, what we will encourage you to do and work with you to do, is to personally examine those moments when it feels helpless or confusing. When this work that asks us to be doing it now feels like maybe there would be a better time later on. Those moments of discomfort tell us something about ourselves if we only allow our bodies and our minds to pause and examine that discomfort. Because to sit in discomfort and suppress our own immediate needs in pursuit of learning something about another's is part of our highest calling. It is part of the calling that we hear from our incarcerated you use. And it is part of our theology of liberation. My colleague, the Reverend Teresa Inez Soto says, that you are here to put out the ravenous flames of the world. Enough is enough. In their words, I hear that liberation is everyone else's responsibility and it is our sacred responsibility. And in the Worthy Now prison ministry, I hear that our most convenient season is now right now, no other but now. We can try to avoid the discomfort of that, or we can face it head on, knowing that if we do it with each other, if we do it in community, in this time, and in solidarity with communities whose lived experiences are the keys to dismantling racism and oppression, we can find that liberation. We can find each other's worthy. Yes, and we can find it now. I invite you into this moment, into this time, because we are going to be together and we are going to make that happen together. And it's going to be exciting. It's going to be discomfortable, uncomfortable. It is going to take everything we have and more. But friends, I know that together we will see it happen. Amen. Ashe, may it be so.